All right, good morning. good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I've been interested in uh, what I think would be good for, for us, for the world, and what I think would be helpful and what I think would be healing would be a new idea. You know, the thinking we've done has got us where we are. Everybody, I think, understands that. All of our thinking up until now has contributed to what we experience in our life today. And so if we want to experience something different, something better, something expanded, something healed, then that means that we're going to have to start to entertain something new um, on the inside. I think we've evolved out of this time, uh, or we are in the process of evolving out of a time where we're going to the externals, the outer world, looking for uh, land or gold or silver or new territories or trade routes and things like that. Now what will save us, what will be good for us, what will be healing for us, science of mind teaches us actually already exists within us. It's sort of like the final frontier, right? And that final frontier, although we've maybe thought of it as being out here, is actually in here. So in the science of mind, we teach this concept that there is one mind, right? That all minds are joined. We are all connected with each other on the unseen side, and also our mind is connected with God. Now, I know it doesn't feel like that sometimes. It probably doesn't look that way, but if you would imagine the, uh, a bicycle wheel, you know, so at the center of the wheel, all these spokes come together, but way out on the rim, you know, where the tire is, it looks like they're each having their own different experience. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I say bicycle wheel, I think about when I was a kid and how we used to put uh, clothespin baseball cards to the tires of our car, uh, uh, the car, because we thought our bicycle was a car, and, uh, and it made our bicycle sound like a race car when we put, uh, car well, never mind. Anyway, uh, uh, so I think that recognizing that we are one with God, also connected with each other, this is actually a tremendous resource for us because there's great power when an idea is shared. When there is an agreement around an idea, it becomes enormously powerful. So as we look at becoming more awake, you know, which is the path we're on and more conscious, that's the path we're on, we're talking about remembering, 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 remembering all the time our connection with infinite spirit. Where is that spirit? It's everywhere, but it's also within us, right? In fact, that spirit is our true identity. You know, another way to say this is the love within us is who and what we really are. That's the one mind. That is the truth that within us. So I certainly remember in years gone by uh, that there was a sort of a prevalent attitude of when there was a problem, pretty much any kind of problem, you know, people's response used to be, well, we got to squash it. Just, just squash it, you know. The, the, idea, the idea was like to get, to get rid of what looked to be the problem. Now, I look at that and think, okay, that's interesting, but as metaphysicians, I know the problem, any problem, any discord, any disorder is an effect, and squashing it will actually not solve that. How many of us know that? Yes, it does. This is really how it works. Squashing it will not solve it. It will only make it recede for a while. Yeah, right? So it does not deal with the cause, the thinking behind it, right? That has got to be a change in my consciousness, you know? So I think a good example of this, uh, of this evolution is, is, is in um, how, uh, how medicine used to be. You know, that for a long time medicine was to treat a symptom and make the symptom go, go away. So they'd give you something kind of to squash the symptom, right? But the problem with that, the problem with that, and that was a very Western approach, you know, the problem with that is that it didn't really handle the the, the, the underlying cause, right? So today there is a much more holistic allopathic approach to doing what we know has to, uh, doing what we know to do to stimulate the forces of life as opposed to suppressing the symptoms of whatever it may be. I think that um, if we encourage the forces of healing, you know, that's really more of what we're interested in rather than to squash the problem. To kill the enemy doesn't even work, right? Uh, it's certainly not anymore. It's like, you know, we know too much. If I squash it down over here, what's going to happen is it's just going to ooze out over here, right? We've, we've seen that happen. So I think we have to be willing to go to a deeper place when it comes to these difficulties. If you remember, Einstein said you cannot solve a problem at the level of consciousness that created the problem. And so in Science of Mind, we say that, you know, our lives will reflect how seriously we are willing to take an idea. 
You know, do I really believe that all minds are connected? Do I really believe that I am connected with all people on the face of the earth? You know, if you, if you toy and dabble with science of mind, you know, well, that will be nice, but it probably won't make much of a difference in your life unless you take it, uh, you know, seriously. It occurred to me that caterpillars left to their own devices would just become really fat caterpillars, you know? But, but, but they're coded. They are coded into something greater. And so are we. I believe that's so for all of us. Now, now, how will we get there? Well, in the Old Testament, Abraham chose one God, right? And so he put God first. I think the whole thing about, um, about a chosen people is that the Hebrew people of old chose one God. Remember, at that time on the planet, people had lots and lots of gods. They had gods for everything. God for the rain, God for the harvest, God for the weather, God for this, God for that. And Abraham said, no, it's one God. Right? And, and so the Hebrew people were the first ones to say, yes, God is one. Right? So we are all God's chosen, I believe, that God does not have favorites. The question is, are we choosing God on a regular, consistent basis? See, I think this is relevant for us. We say we believe in one God, but perhaps we have a few other gods kind of on the side. You know, little side gods, just in case things don't work out with the main god, you know. And, and in that case, we're kind of two-timing God, you know. Uh, pe people, and what I mean by this is that people will make money their god, you know, or people will make a relationship their god, or they'll make some substance in their life will become their god, right? You know, and, and the Abraham shift we could make is God within me is the power, is the source. God within me is greater than any of the external effects or conditions that I'm dealing with. So like Abraham, sometimes that seems unbelievable. You know, sometimes not everybody will, will agree with you, will agree with me, you know, especially when it comes to what looks like, you know, an enemy, right? But, you know, in the Buddhist uh, teaching, they say to bless your enemy for he allows you to grow. And I think, oh, wow, I don't want to do that. I mean, I really don't. I don't. I don't want to do that, you know? But, but I come back and say, okay, the Buddha said, bless your enemy for he allows you to grow. Wow, I think about it, I think, well, that, isn't that the truth, right? You know, because Jesus said to love your enemy, right? So that's radical, you know? And so here we are, 2,500, 2,000 years, 2,500 in terms of Buddha, 2,000 years later, in terms of the teachings of Jesus, you know? And we still really, really struggle with that. You know, we wonder, well, well maybe he didn't really have the difficulties that, that we have, you know? Maybe he, they didn't have deadlines, you know? I mean, really, could the Buddha have had that many deadlines, you know, or that much traffic, or bosses, or obligations, or spouses, or parents, or children, or bills to pay, and all that kind of stuff? You know, when you love your enemy, I think you are sending out an energy of transformation that, that changes, first of all, it changes you, it changes me, and then it changes them. We think, well, how is that possible? Because all minds are connected. Remember the bicycle wheel. And out here on the rim, it looks like we're all living separate, different experiences. But in the center, right there, we're all connected. So it seems to me um, it, it, that we, not only when we make that effort, is it good for other people, it's also good for us because we get um, released from whatever it is that, um, that we were stuck on, wherever we were judgy or critical or just, just couldn't feel like we were free to move forward. You know, if we change us, you know, and especially that change from a very, very deep place, then think about it. If I change, who could be my enemy? Who could, who could be my enemy if I'm the one who's changing? Say, we see, okay, they're in my life for me to be more. This person, this situation is in my life for me to be bigger. This person, this situation is in my life for me to be more loving. You know, um, I know everybody struggles with this sometime. I went to the post office. The post office, it seems like such a harmless place, doesn't it? <laughs> Packages, stamps. Mm. An opportunity for transformation, you know? You know, so I'm standing in line at the post office, and I think, this is right up there with the DMV, all of those favorite places to be, you know? I think, hmm, 
I'm standing in line, I'm standing in line, I'm probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 people back, but in my head it was 52,000. <laughs> you know, in my head there were just millions of people in front of me, and, and of course because I'm in a hurry, the universe should bow to me, and everybody should get with the program quickly, and, and it's doing just the opposite, of course. Of course, it's just taking forever. There were three people behind the counter, and then there were two, and then there was one, and then there were none. There were actually none. I thought, I was like, hey, what's everybody doing back there? Are you all having like bong hits? You know, I mean, I said, like, what is going on? Did you just forget to come back out here? And it's like, now, they're just doing what they're doing. I realize that, and, and because I'm going to talk about a new idea, I thought, I need a new idea, and I'm standing there, honestly, and I'm going, but I don't have one. But I need a new idea. If I would think something different, this whole situation could change. I know this. I know this. If I would start to entertain something different in consciousness, in my mind, in my heart, this situation would just unfold a little differently for me. Now, it might not move any faster, but I would be at peace, which is always, always a goal. Right? I breathe in. I breathe out. I breathe in, I breathe out. I finally, finally got to the line. I mailed my little package. I bought a couple of sheets of stamps. And I got back to the car and I thought, why was that so dramatic? Why, I mean, why was that just such excruciating pain? And I thought, they were just doing what they were doing. It was all me. It was all my perception. It was all what I brought to the party. I was all stirred up. So like not, it was going to be really hard for anything to be right. Have you noticed how that works when we're stirred up, when we're activated, nobody and nothing can do anything the way it's supposed to be done? It's like, my God, what the post office needs is an efficiency expert because they are the most inefficient or, you know, organization. Like, but part of me is watching. Part of me is watching this, and the part of me that's watching is noticing, you know, this train of thought is really not working for you. Yep, keep doing it, but it's, you know, you know, it's not going to get any better. You're in hell. Yep, you're in hell. How are you liking it? And you know, I was. I was absolutely in hell. I was in hell over stamps, you know? I mean, it's like, that, that's crazy. So nothing is as powerful as our mind. This is what we teach in the science of mind, especially when minds are joined, right? Joined in love, joined in truth, joined in light, joined in healing. It also works the other way. Minds joined in darkness, and you know, I know, I did not have to exchange phone numbers and names with other people in line at the post office, right? Our minds were already joined. Uh, you know, everybody was huffing and puffing and sighing and stamping their feet and heaving their purses up onto their shoulder to show their discontent, you know? And, and what happened with that? What happened is the postal workers all disappeared. Yeah, they went out back. They were having fondue, I'm sure. You know, they, they, they were like, yeah, people are going to be crabby. I'm not waiting on them. You wait on them. No, you wait on them today. So nobody waited on us for a while, right? Some people would rather die than change their mind. Ask yourself if that's true for you at all. And think about that, you know? Is there some place where I am so committed to my view, to my way, to, to my reality, to my being right, that I keep the healing from happening, that, you know, that, that I'm not contributing to creating um, an environment where healing is the natural consequence. See, there's, there is the power of God in each of us. We teach that, and yet we act like a victim of circumstance. But the power of God is here. Well, if the power of God is here, why would I act like a victim of circumstance, like they're doing it to me or they did it to me? It's the same power that was in Abraham. It's the power that was in Moses. It's the power that was in Jesus. It's the power that's in you and it's in me. You know, they all had to let go of the thinking that would prevent the power of God from working through them. So what am I thinking that keeps the power of God from working through my life as well as it could right now? 
It might be that, you know, I'm separate from you, or I don't like this person, or I'm very critical of something over here. You know, in Science of Mind, we pray to remember our oneness with God. I remember reading years ago, Joel Goldsmith, who I'm a big fan of his work. He was a metaphysical writer in the uh, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And he would always say, um, when people would say to him, they would say, uh, Joel, you're always praying for us. How can we pray for you? He would always say, just pray for me to know my oneness with God. And I thought that was beautiful. That in every situation, the response for us as metaphysical spiritual students is, I want to know my oneness with God in this situation. If I knew I was one with God in this situation, this situation would look remarkably different than it's looking right now. You know? So um, where I see an enemy, if I can use that word, that is separation. You know? And separation always blocks our experience of greater peace and greater freedom and greater love. You know, we cannot find God while we're focused on an enemy. If we're saying, and if you have anybody or anything in your life where you're saying they're bad, they're wrong, they're awful, they're not okay, we have to face it. In the mind of God, God loves all of us. Isn't that extraordinary? I think that is just an amazing thing, that God is so big and so inclusive that God's arms literally wrap around each and every one of us, whether we're doing the right thing or not, you know, whether we're being, quote, good or not, whether we're being loving or not. God loves all of us because God loves unconditionally. And we're told that we must do that too. But people, people make mistakes, errors. Now, in science of mind, I think our approach to that is that we love them back to their senses, that everyone is worthy of love, even if they're not demonstrating that worthiness right now. You are worthy of love because of what you are. And what you are is an expression of God. You are the sons and daughters of the Most High. And so humanly, we like to play this game, and it goes something like, I will get to know you, and then at some point I'll, I'll understand you and how you work and how you think and how you operate. And then maybe if I agree with you, and if I like you, then I'll love you. Now, I think mature spirituality is actually quite the opposite of that, that it's my job to love you. And in loving you, you know, uh, my mind and heart will open, and I will start to have a greater understanding of who you are. Right? I'll understand you because I already love you, not I'll love you because now I understand you. Uh, and this works, I think, at home. I think it works on a global scale as well. Because humanly, there's, a, there's this great tendency to judge what we do not understand. Don't, isn't that amazing how we do that, you know? Rather than make the effort to learn about it, you know, we could do, we, we sort of say, well, you know, I'll just sort of have a spiritual bypass on this and go, and go straight to the loving. That's what we're going to do. Do you know, I don't know. I don't understand all of it, but I know I'm supposed to love here. I don't understand this person, but I know I'm supposed to love them. I'm not saying love them as in have them home for dinner and buy them gifts. I'm saying love them in that big cosmic spiritual way where I know we're all connected and it's like, you know, what the right hand does affects the left. Oh, this is the right. What the right hand does affects the left. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so what about, we, and I know what we say, we say, well, what about me? What about my problems? What about the healing that I need to have? I feel so wounded. The wound that, that we are blocked from the wound, what I want to say, I want to say the wound is that we are blocked from being our most loving conscious self. And to keep identifying with the wound will never make us more. You know, everybody's been through horrible stuff. In fact, I think people have been through so much horrible stuff, and I talk to a lot of people. It's amazing to me that the world is not crazier than it actually is. People have been through such incredible stuff. Really, really, really horrible, difficult stuff. But if we keep identifying with our wound, we're never, you can't identify with your wound so much that you get healed. You know what I mean? You know, we underst we, you know, everybody understands. People have been hurt. People have been disappointed. Things haven't worked out. You know, you know, and, and some things have worked out. And sometimes we have not been disappointed. And sometimes we have not been hurt. Okay, so it's, it's sort of like the whole ball of wax, you know, welcome to earth, you are not the only one, let's get healed and let's move on, okay? So you could say, um, out of fear, you know, um, and I think this is where it comes from for all of us, that out of our past experience, probably out of fear, we establish beliefs, uh, and they outpicture in a way 
that is not workable for us today. And it may have even been that these beliefs that we're carrying around today served us at an earlier time. You know, we say, well, I don't like, uh, I don't like these people, or, or I want... Uh, I want to see this person really punished, or I don't want them to, to have it so well in life, or on and on and on and on. But you know, what we have to remember is that you, just like everyone else, are a soul, right? And, and you are in fear, and, and when you're in fear, that blocks us having a greater experience of love. You know, and we see that, I say, wow, I have fear here. This is what it is. This is some manifestation of fear. Now, you know, I, I talk sometimes about this idea that we all have an invisible evil twin. Right? Maybe not always invisible. Uh, but my evil twin goes wild with this kind of thing. You know, if I love everyone, I'll just be a doormat. If I love everyone, how on earth will my needs ever get met? That's just not possible. If I love everyone, and all these reasons. Well, well, first of all, I'm not even close to loving everyone, okay? So I don't know why my mind has to dance, my evil twin dances with that one so, so well. Remember, the, the, the words of Emmett Fox, Emmett Fox said this a long time ago. He said, if only you could love enough, you would be the most powerful person in the world. And I think about that, and I think about that, and I think about that. God, that seems so, sounds like it should be so easy. Shouldn't, okay, I should just have love in my heart for everybody. But I don't. But I don't, and, and, and I'm embarrassed that, that I don't. You know, I mean, I think I'm making progress. I'm going in the right direction, but I still get hooked. How do I know I get hooked? I'll turn on the TV sometimes and turn off the sound. I actually turn off the sound with the clicker. I turn off the sound with my remote, and I just watch. I just watch talking heads. And just watching talking heads, I can go up the wall. Yeah. It's, I don't even know what they're saying. I'm just imagining what people are saying. All right? But I get like, how can I be judgy when I can't even hear what they're talking about? How can I be critical when I don't even know? Right? So this has become an exercise for me that I'll, I'll put TV on and I'll see the talking heads and I just praise them and raise them in the name of love. I praise you, I raise you in the name of love. I praise you, I raise you in the name of love. I praise you, I raise you in the name of peace. I praise you, I raise you in the name of peace. And then I think, hmm, did that work? Hmm, I better do a few more. And I do some more. So it's, it's interesting how now the TV has actually become like a mirror of my spiritual practice, that I can see how I'm doing or not doing based on, based on uh, my reactions there. Also, you know, again, remember, we say that all minds are joined. People know if you love them or are judging them. They do, really. It's just like when you were a little kid. When you were a little kid, you knew everything that was going on, didn't you? Yeah, you did. You knew if your mommy was hiding something, you know, like a gift or something. You knew if your parents were fighting, even though they might go in another room and close the door and turn on the radio, so you would never, but you knew. Intuitively, you know. Now, it's not any different. We're just bigger kids now. People know if you love them or if you judge them. You think, oh no, they don't know. I always smile at them. I always make like I like them. But look, minds are joined. All minds are joined. And on some level, they say, well, he or she smiles at me, but you know, I just get this feeling they don't really mean it. See, people are smart. People are smart. So it's best to take the high road and just love them to begin with. You know, you keep judging them, wanting them to be different. The message is they're not okay. How many of us have ever received that message? Did it feel good? No, it didn't. It doesn't feel good when you know you're with people who are wanting you to be different than who and what you are. Right? People don't stick around for that. People don't put up with that. Our job is to accept people fully. Oh, but if I accept them fully, how will they ever change? Right? How will they get better? How will I shape them up if I accept them fully? That is the nacho principle, one of my favorite spiritual principles. It's not your business to shape them up, okay? It's just not. You know, what, what, you know well, well, what do I pray? Pray to heal your judgment of other people. You know, spirit, take this from me. God, take this from me. I don't need to be judgy. It doesn't really help me. You know, we'll never get to the whole world. We'll never get everybody to behave the way we want, at the same time, to behave the way we want them to, right? You know, because you say, well, if I could just get everybody to shape up, then it would be really easy for me to love them. And it's like, yeah, it ain't going to happen. So I was thinking, didn't we say after World War I that this was the war to end all wars? Yeah, I remember that. I see that on the History Channel now. And then communism fell, and we said, great, now there will be peace. You know, but we keep having enemies. 
right? So consciousness has not changed as much as we would like it to. And yes, I think we're making progress, but it hasn't changed as much as we would like it to. You know, that, that spirituality, you know, being in relationship with the presence and power and the principle that is God is a choice. You know, and I think to some extent it is about moving out of whatever our box of thought has been. It's got to change us, and it's got to change right now, I think. So let's pray. Thanks. So we turn our attention inward for a moment now, remembering that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit. That that spirit of God within us is the most true, most real thing about us. And not only are we connected with God, we are also connected with each and every person here. Each and every person on the face of the planet, we're connected with on the unseen side of life. And so I speak the word for us that, yes, it's time for us to entertain a new idea. And that new idea is that we're just going to love people right out of the gate. Regardless of how they behave, regardless of their past, regardless of any outer phenomenon, because we're all connected, because we are all cells in the body of God, I know that the best way is to just put love first in every interaction. We include in our prayer today our parents and children, our family members and friends, everyone we care for, and we know that right where they are, God is fully present right there, surrounding them, filling them, uplifting, healing. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So all of those things that pull at our attention, we just bless them, we accept them, we praise them, we raise them, we just surround them with love knowing that God is fully present. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that everyone gets raised up. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.